Good morning, it is Will. I'm here in Sydney, Australia on a sunny Sunday morning. I'm out on my Sunday run. It does feel good to know that there's no ambiguity, that I am actually allowed to be out and allowed to be exercising. So on Friday, I went to the emergency department. Uh, my toe, which I mentioned, it's now about 10 weeks ago that I broke my toe. Um, it still hurts. So I, whenever I bend it, it still hurts. So as per the recommendations from the GP that I got, uh, what was it like three to four weeks ago, I went to the emergency department to try and get a referral to the fracture clinic. Uh, so I went there on Friday, they got an x-ray, they did a quick examination, and yes, I now have a referral to the fracture clinic. Um, unfortunately, it looks like it's probably gonna be a couple of weeks until I can actually get in there. Who knows, hopefully it's just a delayed union. So there's a couple of possibilities. There's a delayed union or a non-union. So a delayed union is where it's, it's going back together, it's just taking a lot longer than it normally should. Whereas a non-union is where it's completely not going back together and it will require surgery or something like that to put it back together so that it can sort of re-weld itself together. So also this week, uh, you may notice I've got a little fuzzy thing here and that is because I purchased myself a new microphone system. So I'm gonna be using the uh, Rode Wireless Go which is a wireless style of microphone system. So I've got a transmitter here and that goes up to a lapel mic. Uh, this also has a little microphone in it if I wanted to use it without the, lap, the lav mic. Uh, and on top of my GoPro, there is a receiver. And so it transmits um, wirelessly from me to the camera, which means that I can walk around, I can do other things and I don't have to be restricted by just holding my GoPro in front of me. And also I don't have to be restricted by the GoPro microphone. So the microphone on the GoPro, it does the job, but hopefully this audio that you're getting right now from me is a little bit better. And this is gonna be a learning process over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so if the audio isn't great this week, it will get better over the next few weeks as I've had time to analyze the footage and see, oh, I should actually drop the gain a little or I should change how the GoPro picks up on the gain of the microphone and see how it all works. Um, but th these are all terms that I've never had to really deal with so far in my filmmaking process. So it's all something that I'm about to learn very quickly. And I went and got this system yesterday, so I pre-purchased it online and went to the city to go pick it up, which gave me a good chance to have a quick look around the city as well. And for a Saturday afternoon, it was like one o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, normally the city is teeming with people. It is packed. Even in the winter, it is packed. But as you'll see, it was absolutely dead. And if anyone knows Sydney, then you know that for 1.30 in the afternoon, Pitt Street Mall is usually a lot busier than this. So this whole situation with the COVID coronavirus has just changed everything up so much. Um, if you are gonna go for a run outside or a bike ride outside or even a swim or whatever, make sure that it is okay. Um, your local laws may prevent you from being able to do that at the moment. And it is just generally safer for everyone if you are indoors. So complete social isolation. But if you are outdoors and you are doing exercise, make sure you're doing it responsibly. And so that means taking all the proper precautions, making sure that you are social distancing. So you're at least 1.5, two meters, even more if possible, away from other people. Um, don't go to bubblers or public water fountains. Bring your own water with you. Try not to cough or sneeze while you're out and about, especially not around other people. If you are coughing and sneezing, it might be worthwhile actually just staying at home, getting better, and try and pick as many routes as possible where there's no one around. So go to places where there aren't as many people so you have less of a chance of being around other people. Another interesting thing that happened this weekend, um, last night. Uh, I woke up at about two o'clock to this really, really loud boom sort of sound. 
Um, didn't think too much of it. I thought maybe a housemate had slammed his door or something like that. But then after that, I heard some more smashing and crashing. Then I heard some broken glass. <clears throat> Got up to have a look, um, looked out my window and noticed there was a bit of a fire. And so that got me a little concerned because normally you're not supposed to have fires outdoors. Uh, and it looked actually quite big and it was up the side of the building. And so for the first time in my life, I called triple zero, so the emergency hotline. And then once you've told them what sort of emergency it is, you then get transferred across to that department. So in my case, the fire department, um, you give the, you know, sort of what's happening. Um, the address approximate of where it is and they say all right we'll be out there as soon as possible that's it uh, so then I s watched it for a bit uh, it's out the back of my house so it's the house behind my house and I was slowly watching as the fire was growing um, there was a lot of smashing glass and uh, people running about uh, and then it reached the roof and the roof was on fire and then the fire department, probably it was only about five minutes later, um, the fire department arrived. So they were really quick, um, really good. And they quickly, they found the place, they sussed it out. Um, they made sure that there was no one else in the building. So there was only, I think, two people in the building. They got them out, that was easy. They were already out. And then they proceeded to put out the fire. So they got out the fire hoses, they had to find a hydrant. And it took them about probably half an hour to put the fire out. Um, and then there was all the smoke and everything, so then they um, put the smoke masks on and went through the building. So that's another thing they've done, is a temporary closure of all play equipment, playgrounds, skate parks, all that sort of thing. Which is weird. It's all a bit weird. Now since last week there haven't been many more increases in the measures taken to combat coronavirus COVID-19 and that is partially because in Australia we have actually seen a, a massive decline um, so we're in I think what they call it the suppression phase and so as I was talking about epidemiology last week previously we'd seen each day there was an increase in the amount of cases that were found that day um, but over this last week, what we've seen in Australia is actually a decrease in the amount of cases found each day. So all of the measures that they put in over the last couple of weeks, although they were a little late, they could have put them in a little bit earlier, sure. Um, they have been working and they have been working effectively to reduce the amount of new cases each day to the point that our curve is flattening out. Still though, you, know, you want to try and minimize whatever chance you have of getting it and whatever chance you have of passing it on to other people. So yeah, make sure you continue your social distancing, continue all of the quarantine and isolation type rules that have been put in place. Um, just because we've had one little good thing happen doesn't mean that we can drop all of the rules and go back to life as it was. We need to make sure that we keep it in a suppression phase. So if you can try and work from home, if you're doing exercise, try and do it away from others. So on your own at most with one other person. And even if you are with that one other person, keep your distance. Oh yes, and one thing that has been announced in the last week was uh, city to surf. So normally that takes place in August. They've taken the precautionary measure of moving that back to October. So that gives a little bit of extra time to warm up for city to surf. That does also put it in between the Sydney Marathon in September and the Western Sydney Half Ironman in November and the Nepean Triathlon in late October. And talking about city to surf, I have signed up for the charity entry this year again. Uh, so I didn't do it last year, but I did the year before and the year before that. So the charity position means that I have to raise at least $1,000 for my chosen charity, which is Australian Cancer Research Foundation. The Australian Cancer Research Foundation does research into all sorts of cancers and especially um, they help fund the machines um, and equipment that are required for places that do research into cancer and cancer treatment um, so that they have this awesome, amazing equipment that can help them do their research much faster and much more efficiently. And as usual for my run for the City to Surf, I will be running in my Lion Dance costume, 
which is in memory to my Kung Fu Sifu, who unfortunately passed away in 2017 from mantle cell lymphoma. So I will leave a link in the description box below where you can donate if you would like to donate to the cause, um, donate to Australian Cancer Research Foundation to try and help end cancer. How are you dealing with this whole coronavirus COVID-19 situation? Let me know in the comments section down below. All right, well, that about does it for me this week. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run, and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.